Hello there, thank you for joining me today with regard to uh, watching more of these videos, interesting videos about RF amplifiers and uh, such like. And uh, today we've got a Marconi uh, UHF RF power amplifier and uh, this one is, is made in uh, Chelmsford in England I think. Yeah, so I think this is a, an army uh, or MOD Ministry of Defence product possibly used in uh, aircraft as well or in uh, army communication systems and um, this particular amplifier I think works around about the 400 to 450 megahertz frequency band although uh, I haven't done any testing with it yet to find out exactly what frequency it's on but it's thought to be on UHF um, between the 380 possibly to 450 mega band it could even be lower depending on uh, you know the some of the military bands work on some weird frequencies so i think it's uh, going to be a uhf one this around about the 400 meg frequency range uh, but this is an interesting amplifier in the fact that it's got a uhf combiner on the input and the output with two rf power transistors which are obviously operating in parallel to one another and producing a larger output signal than one on its own and we use RF balance transformers uh, which I'll go into in a moment which are quite unique and uh, you don't often see these in UHF amplifiers not much anyway um, mainly microwave amplifiers do you see this kind of arrangement but this is a UHF amplifier so it's uh, obviously quite a an expensive design and these are RF transformers which have got um, the specialist parts very expensive to purchase and they have two inner conductors so it's like a piece of coax but with two inner conductors so I'll, I'll go into those in a moment but basically the the main architecture of the amplifier um, is we've got an SMA connector on the input uh, which is obviously uh, feeding the RF input signal into the device probably in the order of about uh, between 10 to 50 maybe 100 milliwatts of RF drive um, looking at these transistors the output power of the amplifier isn't that much really because these transistors are actually uh, only rated for about 10 watts I think something like that and uh, it seems strange because sometimes just one transistor you know you can get 30 40 watts out of it so don't know why that design has been employed like this because it's only low power anyway these these transistors are only low power in, the, in relation to what you tend to get in most designs anyway that just use singular transistors so I'm unsure why they chose this option to go this route of having two transistors but anyway um, this is a biasing DC biasing circuit for this chain of three three stage um, exciter uh, drive circuits for the RF drive to the two power transistors uh, on the right side here we have an IC arrangement with a transistor and two variable resistors which I believe set both the forward power the output power of the device and the biasing conditions which are fed via these two wires to these two transistors um, so if we just go into it a moment just having a general look at the architecture of the device um, if we have a look at the first stage we have um, what is a small signal amplifier um, which is in the in the era I think around about 100 milliwatts to 250 milliwatt gain output on it so it's only a very small power signal transistor we have a bias uh, voltage which is applied by a radio frequency choke to the base uh, the RF signal coming in goes through a DC blocking capacitor, in this case uh, an RF coupling cap. Uh, this resistor here, R29, is a 50 ohm substrate resistor and across it is a tuning capacitor, a variable tuning capacitor where we can adjust the Q, if you like, of this part of the circuit. Um, and then on the collector of the transistor, again we have another line supplying the collector voltage to the collector of the transistor. And we have a, um, a feed-through capacitor here, an RF coupling cap, blocks the DC and obviously allows the RF to couple back to the base via this resistor. 
and so we have a, a gain loop if you like to give higher gain output uh, in turn that's fed across another um, DC blocking capacitor for another 50 ohm substrate resistor which is R31 to the base of the next transistor which is this TRW power amplifier transistor so we're moving from a medium low medium signal amplification to power amplification now and again very similar arrangement we've got a DC bias obviously same as the previous stage um, a collector supply and then a feedback arrangement again via this resistor R32 and then the signal is then decoupled through a, again another RF decoupling capacitor um, over to the next 50 ohm resistor which is here and then we have a tuning capacitor across that resistor and a tuning capacitor between the base and ground so we can tune these two for maximum signal gain across because we're trying as you can see in these stages we're trying to match consistently 50 ohms all the way across and so these capacitors can allow that tuning um, to uh, if you like give the best match into these transistors because these transistors are not 50 ohms they're near 50 ohms but they'll not be exactly 50 ohms impedance the characteristic impedance of these they'll be way off the mark so it's down to the input and output impedance matching and the tuning to keep that under abeyance again we've got another feedback circuit um, again another RFC and then we decouple again into another 50 ohm resistor before we enter this transformer and uh, this transformer as I said earlier isn't just a single piece of coax that's rigid it's got two inner conductors one on the right and one on the left and likewise on the output one on the right and one on the left and how this works is that uh, if we look at the right hand tab here we've got another 50 ohm resistor which goes to ground this is ground you see these are the emitters of the transistors and um, basically what happens is is that uh, the two inner conductors inside run in close proximity and indeed they often cross over like that inside and these transformers are cut um, to a quarter the wavelength of the center frequency that they're wanting the amplifier to work in so depending on the length of these depends on the wavelength that have been they're going to be used at so this will be a quarter of the wavelength or multiples of the wavelength of the frequency center frequency the band we're wanting the amplifier to work in uh, and because we've got one side matched to 50 ohms basically means that the signal comes in on the left side goes onto the left coaxial uh, inner and is fed then to the right side and dumped into this 50 ohm resistor and in doing that the signal transforms across to the left conductor of the coax and then enters a transistor to be amplified and likewise at the same time as that incident power is going through the transformer and it's matched to 50 ohms then allows RF signal as well to be coupled to this side of the transformer which then ultimately goes through this capacitor and tune in to the stage on the left so that's how we balance um, we do that through two ways we do it through impedance matching on the input and impedance matching on the output and that keeps it at 50 ohms balanced across these two inputs the two transistors then amplify in parallel and the signal then is fed out to DC blocking capacitors uh, RF coupling caps that allow the RF signal to pass and block the DC and again we have the collector current voltage which is the main supply to the unit fed to the collectors of the transistors uniformly and likewise we have two uh, biasing networks which then supply bias current via RFCs to the inputs to the um, transistors as well to bias them into conduction if the bias arrangement wasn't employed on these transistors in the current arrangement that it's in it will be known as a class C but because it's got bias in it, it's now a class AB and these two tuning capacitors allow the networks of both sides of this transformer to be tuned impedance tuned to match the impedances and the the Q of the inputs of the transistors once the RF has, has decoupled or across these two capacitors it then enters again two more tuning capacitors which then tunes these strip lines 
um, it enters a transformer again on the output which is the same arrangement as the input um, and then obviously one side is connected to a, a 50 ohm load and the other side then is decoupled after both sides are transformed within this it decouples here and then it's fed into this um, strip line now this strip line although you can't see it it goes through the center of the board to here and then connects to this antenna socket here but there's another 50 ohm resistor there and there's another strip line which runs very close to it and goes there to that part which is for this antenna socket here now i don't think this is an aerial socket or the output socket for the power i think it's just decoupling to another sensor because there's another strip line here again 50 ohms which then connects to here uh, rectifies the signal the coupled signal it sniffs the signal basically from this line uh, rectifies it and then passes it into this chip which I think with these two potential dividers um, pots will then set up the biasing arrangements for these transistors and it's a form of control power control uh, obviously the incident power coming this way um, the closest that it will decouple to is this side so I think this is to sense the forward power and then the reflected power I think is on this part here so there must be another sensor device that connected here that perhaps sends the reflected power um, so yeah that's basically it uh, we've got uh, some kind of strip line um, power coupler sensor here uh, we've got again another RF transformer um, which then you know allows the both output signals to be combined together same on the input combined together we've got a DC bias arrangement again biasing um, for all the supplies that are going to these transistors and a biasing circuit here which provides the necessary bias current and on the input we've got I think positive and negative that's been marked here and then these other lines must be for TX enable RF power control perhaps and other things that are, are sniffed and sent out then to a logic board for processing so that's a general rundown of this of this amplifier but these transistors only rated at about 10 watts maximum so I think the most you could ever achieve out this amplifier is about 20 watts if you're lucky so I don't understand why they've used two transistors together unless it's just for reliability um, because obviously then they're not sweating the guts out trying to produce 20 watts of power singly if they've got sharing power between them perhaps that's why it's been designed that way for uh, reliability but uh, that's a rundown of a ex ministry of defense uhf power amplifier thank you very much for watching if you like the video please subscribe and uh, please come back for the next videos regarding test and measurement of these devices as well which i hope to be doing soon thank you bye bye